How's everybody doing? Welcome back to another episode of The Banker Next Door. I am your host, Dr. Joe Berquist. Today, I wanted to take a look at Bank Directors 2024 Risk Survey. Um, Bank Directors, a great publication that I've talked about a number of times here in a number of episodes uh, here. They do really fantastic work over there. If you've never had a chance to go to their website at bankdirector.com, I highly recommend it. Uh, but right now, I want to bring up Right here, we're going to bring up the 2024 risk survey. And, and I would just say, uh, Bank Director, they do several uh, risk surveys every year. They kind of do like an m a survey, technology survey, um, just to kind of get the pulse of what's going on in the banking world uh, year in and year out. Um, so let's take a look in here and see what's going on. So you kind of start out with your typical you know, table of context. We have our uh, executive summary and our key findings, uh, risk heat map, uh, key challenges, liquidity and interest rates, regulatory pressure, cybersecurity related risks, and then just some general information about the survey. And then we get into the executive summary. I'll just read you guys maybe a little bit at the top. A deluge of new and updated regulations along with enhanced pressures from bank supervisors has more bank directors and executives worried about regulatory compliance. Uh, bank Directors 2024 Risk Survey, uh, sponsored by Moss Adams, uh, finds rising concerns around regulatory and compliance risk, as well as unease about specific areas like the Community Reinvestment Act, also known as the CRA, and scrutiny on fee income. So let's go into, so what are some of the key findings here in this report? So we have margin pressures soar. So the percentage of bank leaders reporting a tighter net interest margin jumped to 78% from 26% last year, while 14% say net interest margin has improved as a result of rising interest rates. Uh, deposit retention, obviously a major thing, you know, more than half, 59% of respondents uh, say that they have experienced some deposit loss with minimal to moderate effects to the bank's funding base as a result of rising interest rates. Another 9% have experienced significant impacts on their funding base. So more, you know, more than half, 59% of respondents say that they have experienced some deposit loss. Uh, and then you have liquidity management challenges. Uh, the percentage of respondents who report higher concerns around liquidity risk increased to 76% from 71% last year. Uh, when asked about liquidity management strategies, 59% say their bank would borrow funds from Federal Home Loan Bank this year, while 49% would raise interest rates offered on deposits. Uh, stress test results, uh, a majority, 78% say their bank conducts an annual stress test. 58% uh, say they've adjusted their liquidity plan based on the results of that stress test. And 52% are keeping a close eye on loans set to renew in the next six to 12 months. So the next thing would be vendor risk oversight. So 95% of respondents say they assess the cybersecurity practices of the bank's third party vendors. Uh, while just 40% assess cybersecurity cyber practices for fourth party vendors, uh, just 12% say they have faced greater scrutiny by regulators around this issue. And then finally, we have AI and fraud. So 90% of bank leaders would be open to using artificial intelligence technologies for fraud prevention and alerts, and 81% would use AI for cyber attack prevention and detection. So that's very interesting uh, because so they're not necessarily saying that they would use AI for the front end of the business for basically trying to generate sales, uh, generate leads, like keep things rolling. They're, they're not necessarily saying that, but they would use it for, you know, technology for basically fraud prevention and alerts and using for you know cyber attack prevention things of that nature which is kind of interesting so so what do we have here to kind of recap this real quick so we got margin pressure um we've got deposit retention you know banks have lost deposits but that's beginning to stabilize a little bit liquidity management you know in other words if if the if uh if the crap starts to hit the fan you know where are banks tapping into you know what you know, reserves do they have to tap into to try to ease liquidity pressures? And a lot of uh, banks have lines with the Federal Home Loan Bank. Some of your larger banks might have, uh, you know, your your prime money banks, prime center banks. They might have uh, lines of credits at the Federal Reserve that they can just go directly borrow from. 
uh, stress test results. You know, banks are they're really keying in on, OK, they stress test their portfolio and their liquidity plans and their capital plans. And OK, and what is that? You know, what does that look like? You know, what, what are some of the things they need to do? They're obviously keeping an eye on loans over the next six to 12 months because they're highly concerned about credit quality amongst their customers. You know, are they um, are they seeing a deterioration in credit quality? Like, in other words, are, are they seeing cash flows for their customers go down? Margins are going down. Sales are dropping. Um, and they have to then, you know, because when every bank, when you um, underwrite a loan, you put a loan on your books, you're going to risk rate that credit, meaning you're going to put a, a, a risk rating on it. Like uh, most normal risk ratings are like a four or five. Uh, but then if that, credit starts to deteriorate if it could get downgraded meaning it's going to go down to a six or a seven which means it's going to probably go on watch list uh and then obviously if you get to eight nine ten ten being the worst it's i mean it's like but eight or nine is basically like a non-performing asset and then becomes like a total write-off and it's just like yeah we're not collecting uh any more payments on this loan and we have to basically go to, to collection um and then obviously vendor risk management here is a big thing. You know, I mean, vendor risk management is always a big thing, but but here I think that they're they're really starting to look at you know the cybersecurity practices. And and this kind of gets into the episode that I did on open banking, where um, and open banking is part of the uh, 1033 of the Dodd Frank Act, and sorry, I should say Section 1033 of the Dodd Frank Act, and. Open banking is where their regulators are proposing that every bank in the country would basically have to put this back end portal onto their system so that a third party provider could just plug in through an API, and basically just suck out all the bank's data. Um, obviously, I'm highly against this because I don't think APIs are that safe. And obviously, the cybersecurity risks are a plenty. You know, I mean, I think the, the risk of being hacked, the risk of having, uh, you know, just the loss of data through through the vendor or through the bank systems or whatever. I mean, it just I think there's just far, far too many risks uh, to the whole idea of open banking. But I digress. That's a whole other you know, issue there. But, you know, just going over some of the key findings here, what's going on here now, we go into the risk heat map where they start, you know, asking some conversations and you get, you know, compliance, consumer, and it breaks it down by bank asset size, credit, cybersecurity, um, wait, kind of in, uh, environmental climate risk, um, interest rate risk, legal, liquidity, operational, regulatory, reputational, strategic, uh, key challenges, you know, what do you see as the three most significant strategic challenges for your organization over the next 18 months? deposit pricing, uh, attracting and or retaining talent, and then evolving regulatory or compliance requirements. So, you know, so in other words, they're, they're worried that if, you know, what happens if interest rates don't come down, you know, that's going to put margin pressure on us because we're going to have to start, we're going to have to continue paying out a lot more on deposits, attracting or retaining talent, you know, bringing bringing the right people into the bank and then keeping them and then evolving regulatory compliance requirements. Obviously, like I said, you know, open banking, all this other stuff that's, that's coming down the pike. Um, okay. How would you characterize the impact of inflation and or economic uncertainty on your bank's business customers? Uh, 76% would say that business remains stable, but some are pausing growth plans. Um, businesses are, generally strong and growing despite economic pressures about 18 percent and then business clients are increasingly stressed is six percent um yeah i would say that's pretty normal at least for the area that i'm in i would say yeah i mean businesses are remaining stable i wouldn't say that some are pausing growth plans i would say that pretty much everyone has paused growth plans at this point um i, I don't think some is a good word i think it's either all or most um you know but again but i mean businesses are remaining you know pretty stable in this environment so uh all right let's keep going here so how has stress on business clients impacted your bank over the past year 50 percent. we've seen lower demand for commercial industrial loans yes um uh, 40 percent. we've had more loans in workouts 30 percent to others 20 percent. we've seen lower demand for construction loans yeah businesses are paying off loans sooner yeah and 10% we've uh, charged off higher levels of non-performing credits. So 
Obviously, the big one there, we've seen lower demand for commercial and industrial loans. Um, yes, most definitely. Liquidity and interest rate, you know, does your bank conduct an annual stress test? Yes. Okay. How has your bank used the results of that stress test over the past year? 58% we've adjusted our liquidity plan and our policy. 52%, you know, we're taking a careful look at loans set to renew in the next six to 12 months. 46% we're proactively managing certain commercial real estate credits. And 42% we've adjusted our asset liability management strategies. Um, Considering the continued risk and in interest rates of 2023, what has been the impact so far on deposit retention at your bank? 59% say we have experienced some deposit loss with minimal to moderate impact on our funding base. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's pretty, I'd say that's probably pretty accurate. You know, we, we have experienced little to no deposit loss as a result of rising interest rates, 32%. Um, and then 9%, you know, we have already experienced significant deposit loss that could affect our funding base. So... To, to, to how did rising interest rates affect your bank's net interest margin by the end of 2023? Uh, net interest margin has contracted 68%. Yeah. And then uh, if you, uh, I think it was just in, in probably one of my banking update episodes for maybe a couple of weeks ago, I shared the fourth quarter results for uh, 2023. And obviously, you know, net interest, you know, profitability really took a hit at most banks across the United States in the fourth quarter of uh, last year. Uh, based on interest rate increases in 2023 and projections by the Federal Open Markets Committee, how do you expect your bank's net interest margin to change in 2024? 37% uh, contract slightly, 36% uh, think improve slightly, and 60%, you know, we do not expect net interest margins meaningfully change this year. Um, I would probably be in that camp of maybe like improve slightly, or we do not expect net interest margin to meaningfully change this year. I mean, I think the odds of a Fed rate cut in the next, you know, six months are, are going to get, you know, less and less just because of the um, inflationary pressure that's going to be out there. But, uh, but who knows? We'll see what they, you know, we'll see what the Fed does there. So, uh, what actions do you see your organization taking to manage liquidity in 2024? 59% borrow funds from the Federal Home Loan Bank. 49% raise interest rate offers on deposits. 40% raise broker deposits. And 33% tighten credit standards or slow lending. Um, and, and so it just goes into, now I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go, there's a lot of questions here. Let's go down. I think it's, uh, I think, it, let's see here, ownership structure. So I think that's at the very end, um, you know, about the survey, you know, bank directors, 2024 risk survey, uh, surveyed 192 independent directors, chief executive officers, chief risk officers, and other senior executives of U.S. banks below 100 billion of assets to gauge their sentiment on key risk areas, including regulatory scrutiny, cybersecurity, and balance sheet risks. The survey was conducted in January of 2024. So... So there you have it. So uh, again, I, I like I said, a lot of really great uh, information here in this 2024 risk survey. I think this uh, serves as a great way to kind of confirm a lot of the things that uh, you know the bankers are are probably talking about right now, things that they're seeing out in the marketplace. So uh, again, I just wanted to point this out to everybody. Uh, you could go check this out at uh, bankdirector.com. Um, and, uh, you know, I would definitely tell people to go check out some of the other uh, research that Bank Director does throughout the year because they really do a lot of great things over there. They also have a lot of great articles and a quarterly magazine and other things to check out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I hope so. I hope I hope everybody enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, that always helps the channel. Please leave some comments down below. Um, and don't forget to check us out on YouTube Rumble at all major podcast platforms. And I will see everybody again real soon. Thanks a lot.